The Middle Age Candy Store. The Middle Age Candy Store. Have a good time. Try lemon and lime at the Middle Age Candy Store. The candy is sweet, it's true. Though it may seem bitter to you. Wave back at the years, the trials and the tears, the cigarettes and beers, the faces you love, the things, the things you're sorry for. Come in for a spell, there's caramel at the middle age candy store. Hello, and welcome to the store, folks. We've got some great stuff for you this week. Tasty coconut balls over here, and some metaphorical, satirical, narrative caramel cubes for your liking. Nice and meta. So, why not peruse a little and have a look at what looks good? I hope you can bear with me as our candy accountant, Coolsworth, is stopping by today. And I'll have to spend a little time. Oh, here he is now. Karenita, my poetress, my sweet senorita, you all the rhythm and you all the beat, my galactic parking meet with a full receipt. Uh, hello. Ah, skiddly bop, 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 do up, do up, true. ha. <laughs> Now, Coolsworth, if you do that again, it's assault. Ah, uh, sorry, my main lady, but it's entirely involuntary, and I can't prevent myself. Skiddly blue blah blah blah. Well, if it's a disability, then I suppose there's nothing I can do but support you. However, I will state for the record that I would fire your ass out the door in half a second if I could find a cheaper accountant. <laughs> I know it. I know it. So let's talk about our audit then. I'm concerned. Whoa, 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 my candy coated queen. Let us not let the dollars and cents of the world of mammon get us down. Instead, let's get down with some tastiness. We are in the candy store, Carmelita. What do you have today? Well, okay. You can check out this special for now. It's a kind of candy to keep you on your toes, I guess. But after that, we have to get down to business. In our last episode, Cake Baby became ferociously addicted to cake frosting, and Cake Baby's beleaguered mother Helen was losing her heart and mind in hopeless enablement. More, more, shrieked Cake Baby. Its beady eyes followed Helen around the shabby hut where they lived. Helen pressed herself into a corner and cried, I have nothing left to give you. We are out of supplies for icing, and I am exhausted by your demands. Then we must get more. Out into the dark, they crept and soon arrived at the local bakery which was closed for the night. Cake Baby kicked the door and strutted in. Hurry, you fool! Cake Baby snarled. Helen began to gather butter and sugar in her arms as Cake Baby hopped about the room, sneering at the other cakes. Ha! You think you are so special. The cakes regarded Cake Baby in stolid muteness. I am the cake baby, and I am your ruler. The cakes said nothing, though they seemed to be moving closer, making the shop feel cramped and sinister. Bow to me, you mindless lumps. The cakes almost touched cake baby, crowding closer and closer. Stand back. I am your king. Helen cried, 
Cake Baby, look out! But it was too late. The cakes fell upon Cake Baby, and with a mighty thrashing, flailed the sweet dictator into a sticky pile of crumbs. Helen fell to the floor weeping and tearing at her hair. Oh, Cake Baby, how shall I live without you? Helen trudged through the hollow night to her empty shack, cursing every moment of her pathetic life. That night, in her nightmare-tossed bed, she felt a void envelop her body, pulling her down to a place dark and unfathomable, down past sheets, bed springs, wooden floors, dirt, down through ragged tree roots, rocks, water, then warmth that turned into raging flame. Helen opened her eyes to find herself resting against a massive throne, and on that throne sat Cake Baby, radiating dejection. So glad to see you, Mother. Would you have Saccharina turn down the oven? I am developing quite a crust. Nonplussed, Helen turned toward the voluptuous woman in a thong bikini who was fiddling with an enormous dial. Saccharina, in cloyingly sweet tones, said, Not gonna happen. Cake Baby's punishment for being such a loathsome little creep was to be made king of all burnt pastry. Whoops! My hand slipped. Hey, douche noggin, the broiler's on. Cake Baby screams, then groans. Mother, you must get me out of here. I am baked my last crumb. Helen's heart ached for her wretched child. As Saccharina played with the dial, Helen opened her legs and cried, Quick, Cake Baby, hop in! I will take you away from this hellish place. Cake Baby dived inside, making sure to grab a table lamp on the way, because he hated the dark. Belly glowing, Helen ran to the stairs and climbed frantically until she reached a small metal door. Helen pushed it open and realized she was in her own oven, in her own meager kitchen. Home sweet home, Helen sighed. She experienced a wave of exquisite warmth and contentment. She felt replete. Cake Baby started thumping her belly. Okay, let me out. It's stuffy and I can hear your stomach gurgling. Um, wait a minute. Helen had a quick think. Then she went to her bedroom and rummaged in a drawer until she found a pair of tight bicycle shorts. That should keep you in, she thought. Hey, did you hear me? I gave you an order. Cake Baby started drumming her kidneys with sharp, tiny feet. Sorry, my darling Cake Baby, but you are staying put. Helen rubbed her luminous belly with a gentle smile. The turmoil in her gut had eased and felt like mild indigestion. She and Cake Baby would have a good, sweet life. Well, that was a kick, right? As promised, my lady Candress. As promised. <laughs> okay, down to work now. Huh? Well, what's that now? What is happening with our audit, Coolsworth? Well, the tax agent I am dealing with is actually much hipper than the last guy. Very cool. Although, he would not accept the balance sheet or income statement I submitted in poetry form. But he says he might accept it on old bongo skins if the accompanying receipts are there. Well, that's promising, I suppose. And uh, my accountophone is making some very cool sounds. 
Skidly bop 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 boo. Skidly bop bop boo ba ba. Cut that out. What did the agent say when you submitted your filing? Well, they called it uh, interesting and rejected it. <laughs> But we got another filing extension. <laughs> okay, well, now that is good news. Yeah, because I told him you fell in the candy floss machine and you're in a sweet candy coma. <laughs> and you are medically unresponsive. <laughs> Skiddly ba pa pa. Uh. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? I'm just going to. just not think about this. Uh huh. Yeah. That's it. Folks, here's your next segment. Pizza Cops, Episode 3. Out of the pizza pan, into the fire. Early evening in the fancy part of town. We join our heroes as they prepare to bravely infiltrate Freud's sausage and taco. Are you sure these disguises are good enough? Sure, they're okay. We put on suits and combed our hair. That's enough to make anyone look like a high roller. And the glasses? Too much or not enough? I don't want Crazy Bread to recognize me. Don't worry, boss. He couldn't pick you out of a lineup. At least you get fancy clothes to put on. I'm stuck in this delivery uniform. Shut up. You look fine. Okay, here we are. Be cool, everybody, and stick to the plan. Wait. What's the plan again? Shh. As Harry and Marinera are shown to their table, mozzarella slips in the kitchen door unnoticed in her delivery uniform, and begins her search for two-for-one Williams. We hear her thoughts. Wow, there sure are a lot of storage closets in this place. <gasps> oh, my crumbs! Is Monsieur ready to order? Uh, give me a minute. Uh, what's that guy over there having? The gentleman at table nine is enjoying a French taco. A French taco? Buddy, that sure looks like a pizza to me. I guess it could be a taco. With escargot on it. If you folded it up. I assure you, sir, that is indeed a French taco. Taco. Look, bub. Play it cool, boss. Uh, I'll have the, the cheeseburger. Or maybe the hot chicken sandwich. Or maybe... Nah. The cheeseburger. A very popular selection, sir. I'll have this finished pizza. Excellent choice, sir. Harry, look around you. This place is a hotbed of illicit pizza activity. What do you care? You ain't on the force anymore. I know, I know. Plus, we ain't here to make a bust. We're here to get two-for-one Williams out of the joint and take down Crazy Bread. Remember? Right, right, right. It's just hard, you know, to sit here and watch... Your spinach pizza, sir. That's sure a lot of spinach. And your cheeseburger. Harry, that don't look like a burger to me, and... The spinach is raw. Boss, it's true. I ain't never seen a burger that was this flat and didn't have a top bun. And I've never seen a pizza that didn't have a bottom crust or tomato sauce or cheese. Face it, Harry, this ain't a pizza, it's salad. And what you got there ain't a cheeseburger, it's a cheeseburger pizza. Keep your voice down, boss. You're going to break our cover. I don't care. Please remain calm, ladies and gentlemen. This restaurant is in contravention of the Domino's Act of 1951, and you're all under arrest. You can't arrest anyone. You're not a cop anymore. You are all under citizen's arrest. Don't worry about it, Gustav. I'll take it from here. Hello, Marinara. Crazy Bread. That's Commissioner Crazy Bread. To you, Marinara. 
I'm afraid you'll have to come with me. Oh. Hey, leave him alone. Oh, henchman. Grab him too. While you're at it. Oh, nuts. What dark fate does Crazy Brit have in store for Marinera, Mozzarella, and their friends? Will our heroes discover his nefarious plan and foil it in time? Why did Crazy Bird kidnap Two for One Williams anyway? Find out next time on Pizza Cops. Thank you for listening to the Middle Aged Candy Store produced by The Gathering. Podcasts appear every first and third Tuesdays of the month. Cake Baby 3, written by Karen Loomer. Performed by Rachel Perry. Sound designed by Donnie Febbleston. Music written and performed by Donnie Febbleston. Intro and interstitial written by Donnie Febbleston. Performed by Donnie Febbleston and Karen Loomer. Sound designed by Donnie Febbleston. Pizza Cops Episode 3, written by Kristen Mueller Heaslip. Performed by Tony Culverwell, Donnie Febbleston, Karen Loomer, and Megan Liley. Sound designed by Kristen Mueller Heaslip. Sound effects and some music licensed via freesound.org under Creative Commons license. See show notes for details. Cover art by Amanda Madalenis. The Middle Aged Candy Store is a proud member of the We're Still Cool Podcast Network. Theme music by Donnie Febbleston, performed by Donnie and Linda Febbleston. Come in. Spell, there's kids.